Hi there aspiring engineers, today we're doing tips and tricks in Fusion 360. Stick around. Well the best time to see this video is after number 3 or number 4 in the 16 part series to learn Fusion 360. It's like having a YouTube course in Fusion 360 for first time beginners. So the first tip for uh, beginners in Fusion 360 is keyboard shortcuts. Now don't worry, you don't have to memorize a whole list. I'm going to remind you uh, in each of those 16 videos, one at a time. So uh, let's have a look here. Uh, I'm going to start a sketch. And the first one we'll do is uh, C for circle and that just starts the, uh, the cursor off with C for circle. Then uh, R for rectangle. And there we go. Then D for dimension. That's pretty quick, isn't it? Much quicker than uh, mousing up to the... Much quicker than going up to the uh, menu and looking for the sketch dimension in the, uh, the menu there. Much quicker. Learn to use those keyboard shortcuts, and again, don't worry, you don't have to memorize them, I'll help you, I'll remind you. The next one is the S key, tip number two, the S key. So uh, when you're uh, drawing in Fusion 360, uh, rather than even remembering shortcut keys or going up to the menus, hit the S key, the S key on the keyboard, and you get this funny little uh, dialog box that comes up here. Let's put a couple of extra things in there. We've only got one there at the moment. I'll show you how to put a couple of things in there. Alpha line. Notice the little uh, up arrow that puts it in the model shortcuts. Let's do another one. Let's do uh, REC for rectangle. I like to have that center rectangle in there. Uh, let's do another one. Uh, I like to have that select tool in there. So uh, there's a whole lot of good ones to put in there. So that's how you get them on there. Now let's see how you get them out of there. So uh, S for select, we'll go in there and you see that there's a cross next to the to the item. So you hit the, hit the cross and it deletes it out of there. Let's get that uh, rectangle tool out of there, center rectangle. So that's how you get them in there, that's how you get them out of there. And uh, here's a good way to have them set up for a beginner. Now, tip number three. Understand the difference between sketches and features. And uh, this will really help for beginners. So here's an example of a sketch. Notice that it's a profile, it's got sketch entities, there are geometric constraints and there are dimensional constraints. This is a sketch, it's two-dimensional, and typically what we do is we extrude that. So that's a sketch. Now this is a feature. It's been sketched. It's got some. It's got three dimensions, and the features are usually found on the Create menu or the Modify menu. But uh, this one has a fillet, and the fillet is a feature. Right now, tip number four: understand the difference between geometric and dimensional constraints. So here are some things that I've just drawn here on the on this particular sketch. Now let me show you a couple of things. Uh, you're using the select tool to select the line, hold down the shift key to select the circle and then in the constraints menu over here look for the tangent button and notice that the line jumps onto the circle, they move together and the constraint icon appears where they're touching. Now that's what we call a, a geometric constraint. Here's another one. I'm going to select not the line but the end of the line here and hold down the shift key to select the end of the next line here and there's a constraint button in there and it's called coincident watch what happens to these two points when I press the coincident button the, the ends of the line jump together what I'm going to do next is select one of those lines and I'm going to select the horizontal vertical constraint button notice that it causes that thing to go vertical and it's got a, a little icon there that indicates that it has that geometric constraint. Now I'm going to select this one, this, uh, this line, and I'm going to click on the same button, horizontal, vertical, and this time because it was 
reasonably close to horizontal. It's snapped to horizontal. It's uh, presuming that's what I want. And yes, that's what I wanted to show you. One's vertical, one's horizontal. And now, just notice this, that the, you grab hold of one of those lines and you can move them, but you can't, you can't change the angle of the line because it's constrained to horizontal. So that's how geometric constraints work. I'm not going to show you all of them. What I am going to do is show you how each one works one by one in the 16-part series. So sign up for that one. Now let's have a look at this one down here. That's geometric constraints. Now I want to show you dimensional constraints. In a lot of CAD programs you've got lots of different dimensional tools. So AutoCAD. AutoCAD, the old two-dimensional AutoCAD looks like this. But here we are in Fusion 360 and one dimension tool, I've just hit the D key, that's the shortcut key for the dimension tool, gives you one dimension tool and here's how it works. You click on a line, move the mouse sideways, click again and it's got a focused field ready for your input, type in a different number and it changes the dimension as we watch. Now the same tool does arcs and circles. See there's a radius, I'm going to change that to 25, press enter and that updates the sketch. So those are geometric constraints and dimensional constraints. You understand the difference? The rule of thumb is you want more geometric constraints than dimensional constraints. Don't worry too much about it, that's just a rule of thumb and we'll learn more as we go. Tip number five, don't over constrain your sketch. So when you've got a, a part like this one, you put a dimension on the top there, let's say we want to make that one 150, this one 100, then we might somehow put another one over the other side here and you get this error message saying that this dimension will over constrain the sketch. Choose OK to, ch to create a driven dimension. Notice that the dimension that comes up here has got brackets on it. Now we can edit this one, we can make this one 120 uh, and that updates this one. Let's see what happens when we try to edit this one. So the over constrained sketch, when you double click on it, can't be updated. Best thing is to delete it. Sometimes Fusion 360 will give you a error message down in the bottom right hand corner. But uh, just watch out for that. Don't worry too much about it, but avoid over constraining your sketch. Now tip number six, multi-body parts. Fusion 360 can actually do multi-bodies, but it's kind of unusual. So uh, we might have a, a rectangle and uh, who knows, maybe we've got a circle as well. Notice that I've got two sketches here on the, in this sketch, or two separate profiles, I should say. Then we go to uh, extrude these things. We can extrude that one and that one. Fusion 360 can do this. It can have two parts in the same sketch or in the same file. But uh, it's kind of unusual. And uh, it's designed really for uh, one body at a time. And you can see that we've got two bodies under the bodies entry in the in the feature tree over here, body one and body two. The normal thing is to have one body in a file. Uh, now, when, you can't, when you've got lots of experience and you know what you're doing, there are some times when you have more than one part in a file and it's called a multi-body part. Leave that until later on. So these are the tips and tricks for the series of 16 videos. Click up here in order to go to the first of the 16 series for beginners in Fusion 360. See you next time.